This week, over 900 University of Pennsylvania female students came together to release an open letter to all complicit in rape culture at their school. They addressed a letter to all complicit in rape culture. Does that mean if you read it, you're a rapist? <laughs> this is this your new attempt to catch the rapist. You pin that letter to the wall and wait behind a corner. And if someone reads it, you burst out and go, you're a witch. I mean, you're a rapist. <laughs> is that what this is? The latest rapist rat trap contraption. The self-disciplinary action in reaction to the contradictionary definition of self-satisfaction. We're in luck, folks. I appear to be feeling frisky. Rape culture is a complex set of beliefs that encourage male sexual aggression and supports violence against women. You mean like the Violence Against Women Act? I like your game, Hobbit Man, so I'm going to play it too. But instead of playing it with a dragon made of groupthink, I'm going to play it with a real-life legal action taken by your government. What is the Violence Against Women Act? A complex set of laws that encourage female sexual aggression and support violence against men and children. It is a society where women can force sex on anyone and not be charged with rape. In a rape culture, women perceive a continuum of threatened violence that ranges from sexual remarks to sexual touching to rape itself. In a rape culture, it doesn't matter two whiffs of a lamb's ass what men perceive. There is a literal continuum of laws which explicitly discriminate against them, ranging from the Duluth model of domestic violence to the Nottinghamshire model of street harassment. A woman can harass, abuse, physically terrorise and rape a man, but if she tells the police that he is the guilty one, they are mandated to arrest him. All thanks to fits of unapologetically fascist thuggery like the Violence Against Women Act. Rape culture is also a topic I should not be covering on the show. Are you freaking kidding me? I'm going to mansplain rape culture? Oh, yeah, that's a good career move. Yeah, you sound exactly like a second-class citizen would sound. Yeah, set your ass down. Stop juice-plaining. And don't even think of nigger-terrupting. Naomi, I need your help. John. No, I don't want to. Yes, you have to do it. Are you are you guys like in front of two different green screens, like in two different studios? There's a very hydrophobic chemistry going on here. You know what I mean? I can't. These sexist dummies no, don't want to no, hear no, me talking no, about rape. No, means no. That phrase is for sexual consent. Right, I'm fight, talking about fight, doing fight, your fight, job. Fight, fight. <clears throat> it's. I don't know how funny you're trying to be here. <laughs> You just said you live in a society dominated by men, which normalizes male violence against women. And then that happened. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, it, it does make sense as a comedy sketch, if we are indeed to assume that this man, this, this character, is, is, is being sort of held with a gun to his career and being told to say these, these clearly evidently untrue things. I mean, I mean if what he... If what he just said about rape culture was true, then you would get no complaints whatsoever if you reversed the genders here. If a man comes on, shouts at the female presenter, punches her in the shoulder and tells her, you don't get to say no, suddenly the premise would disintegrate, wouldn't it? You get wave upon wave of complaints saying, I know it was a comedy sketch, but it's still an irresponsible depiction of the violence against women, which encourages rape culture. You can't show this. Not on TV, not on YouTube, not anywhere. But if you, if you do it your way around, a woman comes on and harasses, assaults, and demeans a male presenter, and, what, well, you know, this is fine. We, we can show this anywhere and just have it be part of what's normal. <laughs> but we would never normalize female violence. No, sir, no, madam. You see, we've reserved the word normalize. Moreover, 
we have reserved the very concept of normalization strictly to refer to women's victimhood and men's eternal evil. Normalizing female violence is impossible because there's no such thing as female violence. Shut up. We only normalize male violence, and that's why we're constantly making new laws to crack down on it. You're either reasonably clever comedians or it's just pond scum, you know? Between 20 and 25% of women are sexually assaulted at college. Three in every five college age men report experiencing rape or sexual assault by a female in their lifetime. I gave you as many citations as you gave me. 80 to 90% of them don't report it for a number of troubling reasons. 95 to 99% of men don't report it. Yeah, if we are reporting on unreported things, then we both might as well be pulling live caimans out of our asses. One of which is not wanting to be victim blamed for their assault. I was victim blamed once. No. No. Mean no. I'm Fight. talking about. Fight. No. No. Mean no. I'm Fight. talking about. When we're taught that an entire gender exists purely to satisfy others' needs, just do your job. No. I'm Fight. talking about Fight. doing Fight. your Fight. job. Fight. It dehumanizes millions of people, and it's very difficult to have empathy for someone that you don't view as a real person. No. <laughs> No. No. Means no. I'm Fight. talking about. Fight. So it was my fault. I'm sorry that went on for much longer than was even feasibly called for, but that's what domestic violence is like. Yeah. Our societal objectification of women allows for us to normalize and make excuses for the pervasive and unaccountable sexual assaults committed against them. This is rape culture in America. Not to be confused with vape culture in America, which is also horrifying. I see. What's so horrifying about that? It's about as horrifying as reefer madness. How much of this is a joke, guys? <laughs> I'm really hoping it's the whole thing. Otherwise, you haven't drawn your boundaries very well at all. Rape culture permeates our entire society. It's misogynist images in pop culture. It's street harassment. It's athletes charged with rape calling their victims career destroyers. Evidently, none of this is going on in the vaping community. They're just vaping. But you don't like that shit either. Because why? Uh, because they're all losers, right? They never get laid and that's why they hang around vaping. Is that it? In a community where men get laid, it's a rape culture. In a community where men do anything other than get laid. It's loser culture. Have you noticed? The, the first people to discover vaping and the first people to discover men's rights are getting the same treatment as the first people to discover video games and the first people to discover reefers. You get enjoyment and salvation from something that I don't understand. Well, you're all losers, wasters, hipsters, cucks, fill in the blanks. And so help me God, I'm going to make that thing illegal. Oh shit, two generations pass and it's a thousand times more popular. Bollocks. Why do we keep Streisanding everything? What the fuck is wrong with us? The University of Pennsylvania women wrote the sexually vile letter in part in response to a party invitation poem emailed from the Oz fraternity to several female freshmen. Here goes. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure why you're reading it from a prop letter. You could easily have just put it on screen there for people to read along. I'll do the honors.
The year is now upon us. May we have your attention, please. We're looking for the fun ones and say fuck off to a tease. Wednesday nights will get you going with bankers flowing all night. Tonight is your first showing, so please wear something tight. Of all the frat houses in all the land, that is the raunchiest thing you could find anyone saying. And it's a fey series of rhyming couplets that Enid fucking Blighton characters would find quaint and pedestrian. I'm serious. Minus the F-bomb, it would barely be the 15th dirtiest line in Carry On Matron. This is why we call you regressives. Because you are sexually horrified by things your great-grandparents joked about when they were in school. Do you understand why that's the wrong way around? You are the first generation in recorded history to be prissier than the previous generation. Let alone prissier than every fucking generation ever! How in the name of dick did this happen, people? Uh, and I looked up bankers on Urban Dictionary. It means a woman, a man, knows he can hook up with if the one he's trying for doesn't come through. Uh, it's a woman a man can bank on, or a man a woman can bank on. Given that it's an invitation from men to women, which do you suppose it is? It's poetry, remember? <laughs> it has more than one interpretation. Never mind. It's a woman a man thinks he can bank on having sex with. Okay, well, it says here, a buffoon who will create a situation in which his or her social connections are needed to bring about a response that is favorable to them. <laughs> that's, I, 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 that's funny to me. <laughs> Might you suspect why that's funny to me? Ah, never mind. While I'm here, a bunch of mindless jerks who were the first against the wall when the revolution came. <laughs> Whoops, I was looking into the future again. Don't panic. <laughs> All right, yes, uh, this is indeed uh, the top definition. And uh, what you're reading about here is the concept of a woman who enjoys sex with men so much that she is likely to consent to it. Where some, nay, most women are unlikely to consent to sex with a man unless he's rich, handsome, socially dominant and does an extraordinary amount of work prostrating himself before her. There are other women who will simply consent to sex with a broad range of men just because they like sex. Or weirder yet, just because they like men. These women are quite rare. Evidently so rare that they have acquired a slang term. So, in short, a banker is a woman who is likely to consent, whom a man can go to in the event of only finding women who will not consent. Do you know what this proves? Or at the very least heavily implies that men are looking for consent. That consent is a necessary proviso as far as men are concerned. So if we lived in a rape culture in which the rape of women by men is normalized and excused, then men would simply have sex with whoever they felt like, regardless of consent, and there would be no such thing as a fucking banker! And if we look back at the poem here, you'll notice it includes the word please. Not just once, but twice. What we have here is some young men pleading with some young women if they could have the opportunity to be in their company so that they might request for consent to engage in sexual courtship and you, sir, are slut-shaming those men. I'd, even the most stuck-up toffs in all the history of all the worst arist aristocracies in the world, at least they made some time for activities like this without melting into their fucking fainting couches and crying rape culture. Your job, your only job, was to give evidence for rape culture. And the only flimsy excuse for evidence you have is in fact evidence against rape culture. You didn't do your job. I really hope the beating she gives you for this will not be too severe. Goodbye and do your best to do something right. Mm. Yeah.
This is great. Are you, you going to tell me rape culture isn't real? We're okay with stuff like this? Grow up!